the sense about Unai Emery is he's always a little bit overcautious, thinks about the opposition a little bit too much and doesn't necessarily have the bravery to go and win games. But his team do. This team do, which is quite a departure for Emery. I've been walking with no shoes, everybody. Welcome to the Football Ramble Preview Show, sponsored by Betfair. Huge wins for West Ham and Everton as the Premier League plot thickens. It's Friday, 8th of December. I'm Marcus Speller. I'm Luke Moore. I'm Eddie Russell. And I'm Pete Donaldson. Welcome, everybody. It's Friday, and it's good to see you three chaps again. Woo! Great to see you too. Um, the, amount, the amount of words you're able to fit in that intro there. You're turning into snow yeah. of informer fame. <laughs> oh, and I think it's going to get to that stage at one point. I was going to say Twister, actually. Twister. Fast yeah. rapid no, no, no. Yeah. Scatman John. Yeah. <laughs> to date, the finest set of compliments I've ever received. Yeah. Mm. Both, uh, I think Scatman John and Snow are from Canada. Can- snow is definitely yeah. from Canada. One's, Scat- one's dead. Yeah. yeah. Um, Scatman died not that long ago. Yeah. I think Twister's from Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> I wasn't addressing your point, Andy. Okay. Um, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, oh, I tell you what, it is Friday. And what a Friday it is. We are fresh from seeing the charlatans, of course. Mm-hmm. God bless them. We had a lovely time there. We did. And mm-hmm. uh, What do and they do for their um, final song? Because I Frost and Green, the always. Right. Always the same. Which song's that? Oh, which, come on, tell Just him later. Just sing the chorus to I me. Don't, there isn't come really on, a chorus. You've got a lovely it's a, singing voice. It's a wig out. It's, it's a, a wig, wig out. out. <laughs> a lot of wigging out in that band, isn't there? So the great thing about Sprost and Green is that t- it means Tim Burgess mm. can leave the stage about five minutes before the gig finishes right. because there's no more singing. Yeah. So he just walks off and the rest yeah. of the band wig out for a bit. Right, he's okay. probably in the, in the coach. He's no, probably, he's, he's probably he's, drinking a glass of wine. He's making, he's making the rest of the band a cup of tea so when they come off, it's ready for them. Very nice. I'm writing an article for Guardian. Something you should do more of. Well, I'm the last one to leave the stage by popular demand. I'm the last one to make a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, uh... I wouldn't trust it with a hot drink, though. You don't want, no, it. You don't want one. He doesn't know his way around one. Yeah. No. Total bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I was a runner for a long time, and that's where you learn that's to make That's where you met Jeff tea. Shreves. So, don't run with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you first met Jeff Shreves. Ah, uh, you went, mate. It is. I was, yeah, I was, I was in the same room as him on Monday night. There we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, the awards. There was a I lot of other on. people. We I spoke about it on Ramble Uncut. Okay, mm. right, that's right. for the that's for the, for the Patreons. 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 For the Patreons. Spoiler: We didn't win anything. No, we weren't even nominated this no. year. A difficult um, win <laughs> from, from that position, really. Isn't it? Yeah. But as I said to the people on on, on Newcastle Ramble, won a league on. <laughs> as I yeah. said to uh, the good people on on Ramble Uncut, I was sat next to Henry Winter and had a very very lovely time with him. No, can oh, I just say? But we've got to move and on. I and really to wanted to say that in Luke's presence. Yeah, and that's fine. I said it at the time on WhatsApp. Yeah. I said it. I'll say it again now for our listeners. You sat next to Henry Winter. Talking about England and Sven. Yeah, on a table. Can yeah. you think of anything more marvellous than that? And I love you. Yeah, right? thanks, thanks. Mm. Uh, I don't love Henry Winter, but um, that it, it sounds like the worst conversation of all time. When you said, <laughs> when you said and I love you, yeah. it sounds like you've done something really bad to me. <laughs> You know, you're only doing it because and you I love me. I did it me. because I love you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just can't imagine sitting for longer than 20 seconds listening to you speak to Henry Winter. Wow. <laughs> I think even Marcus and that's, understands that. And, and, and that's why you're not invited. Yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it, he's, he's genuinely a lovely man, and I will uh, die on that hill yeah. uh, being so killed rest, by rest, Luke Moore. Rest in peace. <laughs> right, gentlemen. Spurs won. West Ham United too played well though Spurs didn't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they played well. I'm, I'm just loving that. Chat. Lovely stadium. Yeah, great football. Yeah, nil point. Yeah, very few yes. injuries nowadays. They, they, <laughs> all of the players came back and they're losing uh, at home to West Ham. I loved it when I think the commentator. The Hang school. on, all of their players came back. I'm saying they don't have the injury crisis they had a few weeks ago. They're losing basically all their key players. Yeah, he's no, just he's not. just they're coming back. He's just warming up before we talk about Newcastle. Yeah, right. Madison's out. Van der Ven's out. Fine, uh-huh. but look, at all they the couldn't play Pape Sar. Uh-huh. There was there was loads of players out injured. Gaz are still out. And that's been part of it. Back. You know, exactly. Yeah. I, I, no, they have, they, they've lost out. a lot of players. Um, and, and, and they're not winning, Andy Brassel. They are not winning. Um, and it, it, it's, you know, I, you know Ange, Ange himself said um, after the match, us being good means us being 3-0 up at half time. It's not just about playing well. 1-0 up at half time was not a good performance for So us. he was fine to humour good performance without results a couple of weeks ago, but now it's getting a bit annoying, especially in a manner like this. Because if you think both of those West Ham goals are Spurs pratfalls that you think like, couldn't really happen again, mm. weren't they? Are you turning on Ange, Andy? 
Am I turning on Ange? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Ask I, me. I, <laughs> I interviewed him once and he was wearing the sort of jumper mm. like my dad used to wear to the pub and it, I found it quite comfortable. That's nice. I, yeah. like, I like that people like him personally and I'm very interested to see how long Spurs fans will remember that. Yeah, <laughs> very short because, period of time you remember. Yeah, because it was it was always oh yeah, it's great, it's great to have him at the club. You know, mm. he's not like um. I mean, to be fair, Conte and Mourinho were both in, in places disgraceful. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, and and he seems like a good dude, and that's a good thing. We need more of those kind of people in football because you know a lot of the time managers either seem like complete weirdos or dickheads, and Ange doesn't seem like either of those. That's good, but at the same time. You know that this is becoming a bit of a habit now. Mm -hmm. I, I disagree with Pete. They've lost a lot of players. They'll have nine first-team players out for the game against Newcastle. Admittedly, Newcastle, I think, will have thirteen players <laughs> out because that's how football <laughs> is these days. Yep. Um, in theory, you get great football and lots of it, but in reality, a lot of the time, top players now just can't play. It'll be like a next-gen game. You remember it, those it, ones? It will be a bit yes. like that. Get it will the be. youngins out there. Yeah. So, so that's a, that's a factor. But I said this at the start of the season, and I still think it now. Uh, with the terms of a first eleven, the way Ange Postacoglu wants to play, Spurs are a match for anyone, but like they really are. But it becomes very threadbare very quickly mm. as soon as um, as soon as you lose some players, and and they. Well, that's not something that can be laid on him, is it? And I think people are smart enough to realise that. Spurs fans are smart enough to realise. I don't think that. I, I'm not trying to lay that at him. I'm just mm. I'm just trying to give a realistic picture of where they are at the moment. Sure, and it was interesting, wasn't it, ahead of the game last night? It was. There was. Obviously, people will be in brief, and journalists are reporting that they're going to. There's three or four areas they want to strengthen in as soon as possible in January, mm -hmm. and I can see why. To be perfectly honest, I mean, look, the the, the reality is they you know, haven't won. They've lost four in their last five, and 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 haven't won in that time. They're three points behind Manchester City. Yeah. Now I know Manchester. Yeah, City yeah. Are well, Man City. City. That's not. A, that's surely not a a marker this season at this point. In well, the season, but they are the it? champions, though. I mean, look, I I understand your point that Arsenal are are, are, are nine points ahead of of Spurs but I don't think realistically we were thinking too much of the title at Tottenham yeah. I think that they would very much have been very well, pleased with some the people some people were you could, you could you could argue that the incredible opening start to the season has made a bit of a rough for his own back really. yeah, yeah. I, I think if you, you were to offer them a Champions League spot they, they, mm. they would take that and, I'm un, and oh, the point sure. is sure that, that would be an enormous success it would be an enormous they'd probably success. take a few wins at home as well <laughs> they would, <laughs> I remember a few of those as well <laughs> yeah I think well you'd need them if you wanted the Champions League spot but they are just three points off it having had a very poor run of form in the league. So it goes to show how good it has been um, up until that point. But, you know, they, they played well in the first half. They should have been up. You know, David Moyes said, you know, they were lucky. He said at, at half time it was 1-0. He said, oh, thank goodness for that kind of thing. You know, we've got away with that. And then, of course, in the second half as, as it played out. I found it funny that um, the commentator at full time went, oh, masterclass from David Moyes of West Ham. And then as you saw some of the comments after the game, Moyes was like, yeah, we're a bit lucky, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, but West Ham, it's a, it's a fantastic win for them. Yes, they rode their luck. I mean, Richarlison had a good chance, to, you know, when, when, when he came on. Well, the header. Yeah. Um, 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 nice ball in from Porro, wasn't it? Lovely ball in from Porro. But they didn't take him. And as and as Postacoglu, I think, is, is trying to get the message across, is it's all very well playing nice football. But if there's no end result, you know, the journey, Journey is important, but so is the destination. Yeah, he said. He, he, well, he said, didn't he? He said, um, you know, I'm, I, 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 we're too passive. We're yeah. not. We're not kind of. We don't assert ourselves enough, and I don't want to hear about this kind of nice football stuff. Well, and he felt his game. team. They were one nil up. Ah, oh, well, the result will take care of itself. Was yeah. what the word? The words. It's he, a big derby used. game as well. You, know, you can't really afford to do that. West Ham are well versed in having hardly any of the ball, but the ball they have, they make count. Mm. You know, twenty five percent possession is. You know, not massively impressive, but ultimately it's what you do with the ball. And away from home against a team like Spurs, they clearly had a plan. The plan worked. Yeah, look, there was a definite element of fortune around the fact that Spurs didn't go into the break a lot further ahead, but also an element of fortune in the in the goal that um Ward that Ward Prowse scored off the Adobe. Well, you could even say Bowen, though. It was a sort of ricochet. Yeah, yeah it was. So, they, were, so, they, were, yeah. they were both really fortunate. Like, those two goals could not happen again if, if, if they tried. Now, I think the West Ham thing's really interesting, isn't it? Because... If you look at them, if you look at the numbers, defensively, the numbers have been like, really quite poor all, all season, like, mm. the, the underlying numbers. And again, I think you saw that with Richarlison missing a chance that like, he would have to try to miss again almost. Yeah. So I just wonder, that, like, it feels to me that West Ham are operating at the absolute ceiling of where they can, points-wise, at, at, at the moment. Okay, it's a great win, but... Um, yeah, I'd, I, you would still back Spurs in the long term, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think if Spurs can get their players back uh, to a kind of really meaningful level, 
and this is a, you know, a couple of big ifs here, strengthen in January, mm. that when it gets down the stretch, they haven't got Europe. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, that could play into their hands a wee bit. Agreed. Um, and for, 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 for them, strengthening is something they won't just do in January. They'll do it over the next two or three transfer windows because what Postacolo inherited is a bit of a mess. Yeah. And, and what, he's done yeah, definitely. So, what he's done so far in just changing the atmosphere mm-hmm. around Spurs. I mean, this is an annoyance, but it's not something that's derailing them, is but, it? No, no, no. But, but I would also add on the West Ham side, you know... Deviate slightly from Andy. I haven't seen the numbers he talks about. I'm sure he's right. Um, Andy is a numbers bod more yeah, than me, so I'll yeah. defer to him on that. They seem to have like a pretty solid way of playing defensively, and then they've got X factor players who can do stuff going forward. I mean, like a front three you know, of of um, I think it was Kudus who played through the middle last night. Bowen and Pakatar. Mm-hmm. They're missing Antonio, I mean, arguably Ooh. their most important forward player. And they're still able to do this. War Prowse can pop up, and he can do you know do things that other players can't do. So yeah, for sure, it's a lot of um, a lot of things to be positive. They should cement their place in the top half of the Premier League table. Bearing in mind they've got European football as well, mm. and con- considering you know for the first half or whatever it was of last season, there was it was you know a slight worry. It was probably only more, slight more than, more relegation. Than, more than the first yeah. half, Marcus. Yeah. I, I think the thing is because of the excitement, the understandable excitement over the Conference League. You could forget that on, if if you just take the players they've got and the league campaign, Moyes is lucky to keep his job off the back of that. Mm-hmm. There's there's no question about that. So they needed to improve big time in the league and find that balance between performing in Europe, which yeah. obviously they're gonna because they're much better than other teams in, in in the group stage. You like to suck the romance out of West Ham's European campaigns, don't you? Do I? Yeah. yeah. I think he likes to suck the romance out of everything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. At least that's what his wife told me. You know, and I know Peter. <laughs> I know Peter. You think it's not possible to suck romance out of something? No, no. Um, you can blow it into it. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to uh, show us on the on the teddy bear on now? The teddy bear, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but one thing they do have, West Ham, Peter. <clears throat> they have is Jared Bowen. They do have Jared Bowen. And yeah. did you enjoy, Did you enjoy Les Ferdinand quizzing him about playing as a number nine after the game? I mean, to see you can, <laughs> Pete enjoys to anything see Les Ferdinand does. Exactly, I mean, it's yeah. very difficult to imagine. He could, saying, he could suck or blow anything <laughs> into, <laughs> out of me. Les Ferdinand could, could perform an armed robbery on Pete's corner shop <laughs> and Pete still would defend him. I'd give him all the crisps. Yeah, you'd run, <laughs> up, you'd <laughs> run <laughs> after him. Would you like a box of crisps for the journey? That robbery probably took it out of you. You're probably a bit hungry. Yeah. So, Les, you forgot the skips. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do we know? He's not a skips man. He's a uh, rustlers or something. How do we know? Rustlers. Rustlers is a bird. You meant Royster's. Royster, Royster, that's what sorry, you meant. Yeah. How do you know it's Russ Ferdinand and robbed your shop? He's got loads of mouth ulcers. <laughs> 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 he doesn't look like the sort of man who microwave a burger, does he? No. no. Or eat really crisps, yeah. to be fair. Or eat yeah, anything. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, what are you doing to, to Les? <laughs> <laughs> but let, let, Les talking to Jared about the idea of how you... Um, you play effectively as a number nine and all the rest of it. It's mm. good stuff. It's great oh, content, yeah. actually. You've just got to hang in the air for ages and then the ball will eventually come to you and just nod it in the back of the exactly. net. <laughs> Get yourself That's up it. about a week early there you and go. stay there for a bit. Uh-huh. Like a salmon in mating season. Oh, he's like David Blaine hanging in the air, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> like a man with a helicopter. Oh, yeah. now you're talking. Nah, absolutely right. But a great win for West Ham, uh, who, of course, face free-scoring Fulham on Sunday. Um, More on that later. Uh, oh, uh, Newcastle are off to uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, in the injury derby, uh, which would be an interesting one. Um, Newcastle, um, of course, uh, then have a match against Milan in the Champions League on Wednesday the 13th of December. So a busy time for them. Uh, and is that why they phoned in the performance against Everton, Peter? 3-0. I, yeah, I, well, it, I mean, it was very much nil-nil until quite late on, which was rather upsetting. So I think with, give them a point. So, give them a point. so I, think right. with, um, yeah. I think with Newcastle, you've just, at this moment in time, just they may have... A pretty decent eleven, but mm-hmm. we'll just wait them out because yeah. <laughs> Kieran Trippier is going to make two yeah. mistakes inexplicably. You need your you need your your wisest and most experienced players to step up in these moments. <laughs> but you know, someone was saying to me at the, at the weekend at the Newcastle um, Man United game, like in any normal situation, Trippier would be having a rest at the moment, and oh, that's yeah. what they yeah. bought Livramento for. You know, yeah. it, and, and that this was this was the moment, I guess, where he and Newcastle's current eleven, which you yeah. know, you don't need to wonder who they're going to play against um, Spurs at the weekend and who they're going to play against Milan next week. It will be the same eleven. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, it, it was it was the bit where Trippier and the entire team was like, as Pete was saying, just we can't anymore. We can't do much more. And, of so, this. and so, can I can I make a slightly different, like potentially a, a, a bit of a spicy take on this? Ooh. Is that I think the two errors that Trippier undoubtedly made, which were less than ideal, and obviously you don't want a player, particularly of his experience, to be doing that. 
I still think there was quite a lot for the Everton players to do. Dwight McNeil finished it mm. with a plum. They were quite yeah. far up the pitch. Yeah. Mm. It wasn't like a back pass error or get caught in possession on the edge of your own box type. It's just error. out of character for Trippier, though, isn't it? It is, but I yeah. think there was I still think that actually Maybe because, as you guys were alluding to, the Newcastle players just all red zoned at the moment because they're so tired and they couldn't do anything about it. It felt a bit to me like if I was Trippier, yeah, fine, I've made a mistake, but mm. you guys could have dug in there and sat in and helped. Well, that's the whole point, isn't there? There's, there's, there's not the freshness. Yeah, well, I mean, they found a bit is... of they found a bit of energy, Andy, when Jordan Pickford was celebrating after the game. <laughs> oh like, yeah. Oh, suddenly the energy levels were topped up then, weren't they? Gimenez was absolutely <laughs> fuming. They're all about the energy then. <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the Jordan, pi- Jordan Pickford does do that, doesn't he? And the Piff Posse, I'll tell you, you would have been fuming about that. The Piff Posse, you know yeah. why? Because uh-huh. the sponsor kept got ripped off of Bruno Gimenez's shirt. You're right. Right. So all the photos ah. today don't show the sponsorship. Got it. Well, That's presumably sorry, he's got it tattooed underneath. Poor optics. <laughs> yeah, lift your shirt up and show your tattoo. There you yeah, go. You yeah. didn't score though, so he didn't. You, you em- do that. Emil Kraft got a couple of minutes at centre back. <laughs> Love that. He would have. Yeah. He would have went. I can't wait to kick a football again. A centre back. Yeah. But, but, See, that's the sort of thing you would do. Like if you were Harry Redknapp slash Thomas Tuchel slash anyone who's trying to make a point about the lack of. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah, what yeah. you do. Like a couple of days before the transfer yeah. window, isn't it? Yeah. You, is put it, three, is it... you put three keepers on the bench. Yeah. yeah that's a Would good he be idea. pointing up at the uh, at the scoreboard? You know, the Amazon doing that substitutes thing. Still got, look, they're all still there. <laughs> all there. I haven't used one, have I? <laughs> Wait, why did they? Why did Eddie Howe only use two subs then if the players are so tired because the others are so bad? Because he doesn't trust. I mean, trust. who have we got on the bench? We've got um, yeah, he had, two um... goalkeepers. Uh, We've got Paul Dummett, Matt Ritchie. Matt Ritchie's always going to get his game. Yeah. Matt Ritchie's always going to come Pete, on. I, I, actually th- I actually saw um, in the lineup. I was like... I thought about that point earlier. I was like, "Why is he's got he's got Jacob Murphy on the bench? Why don't they bring him on?" It's not. It's a bloke called Murphy. I've never heard of. No, he's like nineteen. Got, yeah. Plays at the back. Alex Murphy. Yeah, yeah just look it. at the, you. Just look at the squad numbers, don't you? Twenty nine. Mark Gillespie, uh, third keeper. Uh, Amadou Diallo, forty nine, fifty four, and sixty three. It's not what you want. Phil see. Foden wears number forty seven. Would you like it him does. in the team? Yes, I would. Marcus, ask <laughs> him you. that. You yeah, should be asking the most tough questions. <laughs> I, well, I, why would I bother? Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, I think that with Newcastle, I was surprised actually that he didn't play one or two newer faces in this game. Now, I understand Everton have won the match 3-0, but unless there's, there's a huge upturn in fortune with regards to injured players coming back, Spurs away is a tougher fixture on, on paper, and then Milan, and the Milan game is, massive. is huge. Massive, yeah. So, I don't know, maybe... And you could argue Spurs are a direct competitor. Could, 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 e- e- exactly, yeah. yeah. I understand Everton have, have beat them 3-0, and Everton missed a lot of chances. So, again, that's not a slot on Everton. But just, you know, I don't think it's a foolish point to make that on paper a way to Spurs is harder um, than it no, is in the park. Um, so, but he didn't do it, and, and, and they were punished. Um, and, and credit to Everton, by the way. Very who, much who, so. Since, they, since they've had this um, punishment, which, you know, is really, by and large, nothing really to do with the players. Um, it's soul destroying. I mean, if they mm. if they hadn't had that ten point deduction, they'd be above Chelsea in the t- in the table. They'd be well, doing really having, well. Having said that, you look at the they've channeled at, it, is what I'm saying. Yeah, you look at you look at the team they've got. You look at their home form. They're never going to be smack bang it. If you're going to lose ten points, this is the season to do it. Yeah, yeah I do I, agree I, with that. I, yeah. I know, like obviously, that Everton fans won't see it that way. But in terms of staying out of relegation trouble, whilst I don't know anyone who thought when they got deducted those points, oh, they're in big trouble now. Mm. It's 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 like a a sentence on their season. That they're, yeah, but they're it, definitely it is, can. It, I, I do agree with that, but it is a huge point to stay. And, 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 it's, and it's, also, it it's also quite easy to say that in the rearview mirror now. Like they only finished, they only escaped well, we relegation. Said it at the time. Well, only, I said it at the time. They only escaped relegation by two points last season. There's actually but they're no better guarantees. Now. Well, they but, are better now. But yeah. that, that's empirically true because they've had 12 or whatever games and they've shown that. It, no, but they've got a better squad now. They've got a better manager. Loads of money. From the start, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you, done, lads. From the start of the season, and there are three teams in there who you think, yeah, all right. When you say this, a is, a, this a is a season buffer. to do it, before people start thinking, all right, like, just spend, spend, spend. It won't count for the season. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so don't be fooled by that. Yeah. Do it every season, but just make sure you buy decent players for that <laughs> amount of money. Nothing, nothing bad can come of spending loads of money. No, as, no. as, a, as, a, no. as a Portsmouth fan knows. As Elton John says. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to see Martin De Bravica get a little run out. He looked a bit shaky as well at times, didn't he? I don't know. He's, he's always even. been pretty. He's always been pretty solid. But I mean, they were. M- m- Pretty much point blank, sort of smashes past. I don't think they? for the goal, but I think there were one or two handling issues yeah. throughout the game. From what I saw, a bit rusty. Yeah, a little bit rusty. rusty. Yeah, Sean Dyer. He'll, he'll get his time though. Kind of got pops out forever. Yeah, oh. but kind of, but the kind of rustiness that makes you think, oh, is that David De Gea in the stand? <laughs> <laughs> are, are we back to Carrius in the cups though? Ooh, yeah, is, is maybe. That what that means? Yeah. That'd be good, wouldn't it? That would be. He's the man for the Milan game. 
Oh, big time. He big is. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting back in the Champions He's League. He's bigger physically. He's yeah. just more muscular. Very sexy as well. Sexy. Um, speaking of sexy, Sean Dyche said in the post-match, uh, this season, apart from the obvious uh, with the 10 points, I think we've been in terrific form. Might be slightly generous to say this season, but as Luke was saying, Andy, Everton have been in great form recently. Um, should have been, uh, you know, a couple of goals. I mean, I understand one might say, oh, well, Trippier's errors and da 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 You know, Everton should have been got you know a few goals to go. Calvert Lewin missed a great chance. Yeah, but Anthony Gordon missed a great one at, at nil nil as well. So. Yeah, yeah, but I think Everton were good value for the game. win. I, I don't reckon it's a three nil kind of game. I think no. what's what's interesting is they could have done with spreading the goals out a bit because what Dyche is saying about they've played really well all season. I think if you go back to those early games of the season, you look at the Fulham game at Goodison Park, really. Well, they had a lot of chances. They, they battered them and they ended up losing 1-0. Mm. It's, so, it's the opening day, though. I mean, the opening day is a bit of an anomaly, really. No, I, but I, I think, think Everton have about improved. The whole, they have. The whole opening part of the season, they're playing well at home, but they can't put it in the back of the net and they can't get the results and they've just become unblocked, really. That's what's yeah. happened. And indeed, and so a 3-0 victory like that is 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 absolutely just the tonic. And, the, and, 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 and uh, Goodison, specifically. And they'll sniff a bit of blood on Sunday because they play Chelsea at home. Mm. That's mm. a big opportunity for them. They, 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 they shall do. Um, so, yeah, another round of Premier League fixtures presented to us by Amazon Prime comes to an end. Yeah, you sound like we're a sponsor. They're not paying us fuck all for you, sir. No, they're not. Um, <laughs> uh, although Stats by X-ray. There is another There yeah. is another round coming, though, I believe. Yes, um, there will be, yeah. Have although Amazon week. haven't um, um, optioned anything for the next round, have they? 2025 to 2029, they've got nothing. No, that's it. They've so... not just, they decided to keep their powder dry. Yeah, and Jurgen yeah. Klopp's only ever mean on there. So. Well, I was about to say, I mean, <laughs> will Klopp be... Will he be He's a Netflix right? man. He's a... <laughs> <laughs> so you've got Stranger Things get fucked he's really? HBO man surely yeah, angry he was particularly antsy we, we know he can be a bit of a sore loser and uh, and, and, and even, even though they didn't lose the game of course Sheffield United but uh, yeah he was a bit prickly wasn't he was it, to, um, was it Marcus Buckland the presenter yes yeah. it, was, it was a bit child on a late night you know, if, I felt if quite, you've, I quite you've, protective you've, of a fellow Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, it's nice to have a Marcus in there shut up <laughs> It's like that idea of if you've had like an, an extra game during the week, everyone's a bit more tired. Everyone's a bit more unreasonable. Mm. So it could be like Kieran Trippier completely losing his compass or it could be yeah. Klopp completely losing his shit for really mm. no reason. Mm. The, thing, the thing is... Uh, you were a bit harsher to him on the WhatsApp group, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Allow me. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I, 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 my take on this is just a bit that Klopp can be like this. He's very prickly at best sometimes. Mm -hmm. He does feel... I think it's part of a symptom of how close he feels to his players. Yep. He's very avuncular to his players. He sees his players going through it and really dedicating themselves. He actually did speak a bit about that in the thing that got lost in all the noise of the kind of the way he behaved which wasn't ideal mm. um, so I do understand that but he it didn't look great for essentially someone who's a custodian at a club the size of Liverpool but I would say you know, at the risk of you know criticising a fellow broadcaster I thought it was a stupid question I thought it was, I thought well, he, it was more of a comment than a he question. phrased it in a really stupid way mm. And it was a little over familiar with you. Yeah, and it, and it was, which, which, but I think Klopp covets that a little. Sometimes bit. he does totally. Yeah, but, but but the way he did, the way he said it was almost a bit like sarcastically, and I think that's what. Well, that's how he, that's how he took it. Definitely. Yeah, I'm not sure that's how it was meant, but that's definitely how he took I, it. I'm not. I, look, live TV is very very hard. I've never been able to do it, and I'm never going to be able to do it. So I totally respect Marcus Butlin for, for the way he goes about doing his job. It's not easy. I get that, um, and it's you know it's a lot of pressures on and all the rest of it. I just thought if he's been honest with himself, I think he probably wouldn't have phrased like that, given the chance again, uh, regardless of the the response from Klopp. Because I think it was a sarcastic way of doing it, and he knew he should have known that Klopp was very prickly about it. What's German for? I think you are taking the piss. <laughs> Schadenfreude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what's, what's German for? Nah, I'm a fucking football manager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's not take the piss here. Yeah. <laughs> Roy had a little one, didn't he? Yeah. But it was the Palace fans. Pete are, was talking, know, Pete and Mike Andy were they, talking about you it. You were talking they? about it on Ramble React. Yeah, yeah. He was oh. saying that Crystal Palace fans never had it so good. It's a bit red nap, isn't it? I mean, that, that that is the sort of thing that if you're a Palace fan, makes you think, right. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that is provoking. We didn't necessarily want you all that much, <laughs> and this is where what we're getting, right? Okay, it's fine. provoked a lot of conversation in, yeah. on, on Palace Twitter over the last couple of days, let's right. say. So when did Palace have it better, Andy? Cup no, that, final. That, Cup final. Yeah. It is. So but, pardon you, pardon but, you. But, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about the cup final before Bears that. There's the bear trap. But, but, but Marcus, it's, it's not... <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. Fine. I understand. Okay. It's, it's, it's fine, fine for us to sit here and go, 
oh yeah, but well, they start comfortably every season. We're, we're not paying hundreds and hundreds of pounds to watch them play largely shit football and it's for also a number like, of years. It's also like Trippier's coming out after the game last night and saying, well, tell me a better right back you've had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds ridiculous. It's yeah. never a mentor. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, before we go to a break, everybody, big news. Big news. Enormous news. The Ramble mailbag is going weekly. Oh. Weekly, I tells you. Yeah. How is the mail? How is the fibers separating the cloth with the um, yarn that ties the mail bag together? <laughs> how is it going to? It's an AI thing. Maintain, it's an AI thing. Yeah, okay, exactly. Fine. Yeah, AI. like um, our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the the, the mail bag. You've loved it. We've loved it. So we're bringing you a brand new Ramble Mailbag show every single Saturday. And join us tomorrow because it promises to be a bloody brilliant episode. <laughs> What about some Asseville, your old side? Be happy for big things this evening. Yeah, I think it does. Like, like we said earlier, they've won. Oh. And there's a goal. Welcome back to the Football Ramble, everybody. <laughs> Is that a bongle hall? It must be. Yeah. Must mm. be. Stinks to high heaven of a bongle hall, that. <laughs> <laughs> he was on uh, Talk Spot this morning singing the theme tune to All Fields and Horses, which obviously delighted me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the intro or the, uh, or the end credits? Well, I yeah, don't it's an important question. Saying, no, it's an atrocious. important question oh, because what? the the, diff- the songs are different. Put oh. a pony in my pocket. Is it is it Hooky Street or is it the other one? Oh. Which, which do you prefer? Hooky Street, then. I think yeah. it was Hooky Street. That's Love the, oh, that's the coda. Live, we don't need it. Yeah, we, no, we do. We don't need it. We <laughs> want it. Start. We don't need it. <laughs> okay. But I, I, I mean, he's just bad, isn't it? It's just bad. It's stuff. just bad. It's just yeah. bad radio. It's just bad stuff. It's bad radio. Well, Brazil, Alan Brazil was doing drunken karaoke at 3 p.m. yesterday, so. Oh, uh, that's why Jamie O'Hara is on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> going, going through his uh, favourite Only Fizz and Horses uh, episodes. <laughs> Uh, they know their was, audience. Which was him, he mentioned the one with the chandelier, the one where he falls to the bar, and that's it. Yeah, Beckham Spring. Good. Beckham, Beckham Spring. Spring. Not Beckham connoisseur's Spring. choice, is it? No, um, I, I think it's it takes Miami. I think it takes a remarkable <laughs> amount of chutzpah, <laughs> a remarkable amount of chutzpah to have a thought process that says the nation wants to wake up to Jamie O'Hara and Gabriel Bonlaw. <laughs> so, so it was um, the Ron Verpelli and, and, and um, I love O'Hara. Ray. I love Ray. But O'Hara's like leading, he's the main presenter. I know. That is bizarre. I know, I know. Should be dancing. Should Give be it Donaldson to, to, to the end of the season. Give it Donaldson to the end of the season. set fire to his radio we'll talk- with what he did on air we'll on talk- Absolute Radio. We'll be talking about fairies next. He didn't know, he didn't know that, to be fair to Pete, he didn't <laughs> know there's a webcam. Didn't know there's a webcam. I want to broadcast like that. I should be allowed to. You should. Yeah. Um, as long as you don't get decide. it on the walls. Wolf, Wolverhampton <laughs> Wanderers versus Nottingham Forest. Yeah. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. Steve Cooper reportedly has, has 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 got one more game to save his job as Nottingham well, how Forest did it, manager. How did it feel to you? You you were uh, yeah. You're at the Fulham game. You're at the Fulham mm. game. It it felt, it felt like from what game. I heard from yeah, but it felt like what I heard from a lot of Forest fans that he mm. was being almost serenaded off. Can I, is, can, is, that, is that fair? Before Marcus answers the question, no, allow right. me to bring a bit of context in. I think I'm right in saying I believe that Marcus watched Fulham 5, <laughs> Nottingham Forest nil, with Roberto Martinez and cricketer Stuart Broad. <laughs> you <laughs> truly are the Jimmy yeah. Tarbuck of I the know, 21st exactly. century. He's absolutely shameless. <laughs> <laughs> if I can uh, just quote Tony Pulis. <laughs> 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 Um, I was in the actual cottage. Yeah, where dreams are made. Yeah. It was it was absolutely made. So Andy, I, you're talking about Steve Cooper. And all. I just want to talk about what what happened to me that <laughs> evening. Want to talk about break. his canopies? I had oh, it was it was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I had a nice chat with Stuart Broad. He's a Steve Cooper stay man, incidentally. Right, good insight. Yeah, lovely lovely chap. I had um, quick chat with Roberto Martinez in the bogs. Congratulated him on what he's doing with Portugal. Are you just following what? people around? I said I said if you want to be future England, are you manager, shaky hand man from Banza? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not in the toilets, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I said, once a Gareth is done with the job, if you want to be England manager in the future, I would be willing to entertain that. Nice. He said, stop looking at my willy. So never you. <laughs> I, said, we're out the, I said, we're out on the balcony now, Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's looking at it. <laughs> but it well, you're not a details man, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your willy's out. Yeah, we know you like attacking, but put it away. <laughs> I, I know it's a cold night, but come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, but uh, uh, what was your question, Andy? Great insight, that. Isn't Did it? I enjoy... As Roberto Martinez got a lovely penis. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Raul Jimenez scored two goals. Tom Kearney got the fifth. Uh, you know, 
Christmas so you, came early. So what's happened here is, yeah. is ever since you've said that you're worried about Fulham being able to score goals from open play, they've yeah. started to absolutely they've, rifle them home every single week. They've listened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think, I mean, I mean, I mean, Forrest were bad against Fulham, yes. Fulham were, were brilliant. Though. But, but, but did you think? Did you think Forest were bad? They weren't. They weren't the worst team. That's definitely still Sheffield United. But right. uh, yeah, Forest weren't that that good. I mean, the funny thing is, in the early stages of the game, they did have a bit of something. But as I say, Fulham just free scoring. And I think as the game were, went on, Forest were worn down. So I don't think it's. I didn't look at that and think you know Forest are in, are in big trouble. I understand performances at the start of the season. You think about. Um, you know the, the the away games at, at Arsenal and Manchester United. You know we made a lot of those at, at the time. You know, good away win at Chelsea, which wasn't that long ago, I suppose. There was a bit of something. I know they've got a couple of injuries as well, and and, and so on. But I, I don't think Forest will go down. Um, but you know, I think we're this far into the season, and th- there's been a bit of a slide, and people start getting nervous. Mm. Or angry as the owner did because he chucked his badge in the hedge, yeah, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but there's, they've, they've only won one Premier League game since the start of September. Yeah, and and so y- 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 I think for a number of weeks they've looked like where is the next win coming from? Yes, that's, that's the issue. Really, that, isn't that it? is the issue because again at the start of the season it was kind of like okay we haven't won a couple of these games but you're not really expected to and there was something there was performance uh, in there there was goals there was a sort of an identity if you like uh, with the team you know yeah. Gibbs, Gibbs White was you know looking um, great in the centre of the pitch and and, and so on. That doesn't seem to be there now. And it's a case of, mm, okay, is this a bit of a rut that they come out? Because, mm. again, we're not expecting the aforementioned Spurs to suddenly drop off and not be challenging for European places. You know, teams can go in a bit of a rut. But it's a tricky one. Is this a rut or is this a proper rut that's set in and you have to change the manager? Well, I think... I don't... I, I, my honest answer, I honestly don't know. I think the thing is... this period as well. Yeah, and but, I think that, that, that my thoughts were, with regards to the fans, is actually when they were down, they were still supporting the manager. I don't think it was serenading him off as in, we bloody love you, see you later. They might, I mean, that could have changed by 5 0 and, and knowing the owner as they do. And so Yeah, I, I think that's it more than knowing the owner because mm. Maranakis has never been completely sold on him. No, and so, so that's the thing. I think but it's, early it's, in not, the game, it's, not, it's not Forest fans saying, thanks for everything you've done, it's time to go. I think it's Forest fans and the impression I get from Forest like. fans, exactly, knowing which way yeah. the wind's blowing and yeah. saying, look, we still love you, man. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think, think that's, that's probably fair. I think that's probably fair. And, and do you know what? It's very rare in football you get that. Mm. Yeah, very rare, yeah. and I think, and it and it shows you what type of man and what type of manager Steve Cooper's done and what he's done, and for what them. they've lacked for a quarter of a century. Yeah, and 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 fair play to the fans for doing that. Yeah, because they could be like, oh, bloody hell, you know, look, we're, we're in the Premier League now, and you, you forget all that. But I, th- I actually thought that was really nice of the fans mm, to do yeah. that, and I think he was really touched. And his post match comments were very very interesting, but it did seem like a, a, a chap who is, is is down on his luck a bit and is saying, look, even when he says I'll do what's best for the football club, he's basically saying, if I get sacked, I understand it. But he'll walk into another job. And of course he will, but that's yeah. th- that's not necessarily the point. Yeah. What's going to happen, though, I'll tell you right now what's going to happen. Uh, Wolves are going to lose this game in the last minute for a dodgy penalty, and Gary O'Neill's going to steal the headlines again. And Steve, <laughs> Steve <laughs> Cooper's going to get away with it. Say, I think Cooper looked at the fixtures when he when he spoke to the owner and was just like, Great. he managed to sweet talk him, just one more game. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I've secured that, as long as we're not losing. But, but I, I, do, I do think there's an, a couple of things that I'd add, just that not only has Maranakis perhaps never been sold on Cooper, Maranak has probably never really been sold on anyone. Well, I was about to say. He's, he's a, he's a trigger-happy owner. Yeah. And he's got a very, very, you know, careful what I say, but he's got a very, very interesting past. Mm. Um, and um, clearly is, like I say, I can't really say any more than this. The fact that he's an interesting character. And it's, he it's, doesn't it's, respect lanyards. He doesn't respect lanyards <laughs> at all. He could have hit, he could have hit Roy, Roy Hodgson with that, chucking it in a hedge carelessly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but, but Roy Hodgson did do a lap of honour at Craven Cottage after the game. <laughs> So Palace never had it so good. <laughs> Swooping uh, around. Um, the, the other thing is that you know, regardless of that point, though, they have brought players in. Yeah. I mean, it's not though like they haven't. Oh, they have uh, signed a lot. They've signed a lot of yeah, players that presumably yeah. Cooper's had say in. Yeah. And you look around that team. I know that so Gibbs White didn't start. I don't think against against Fulham. No, but, he didn't. Though. But they've got interesting players going forward. I mean, Callum Hudson Odoi plays for him. He mm. was linked by a unit for thirty million quid not that long ago. Yeah, he's, he's taken a big left turn since then, hasn't he? Big time, but he's clearly got a huge amount of ability. There's a player in there. Felipe's a good player. Ola Aina's mm. played at a good level. You know, he's mm-hmm. clearly a you yeah. know, good Premier League player. Anthony Langer's played at United. You know, Rigi's played in the Champions League cool. at latter stages. You know, mm. these are players who have got history and have got a um, got ability. Um, Chris, are, Chris Wood, I mean, Chris Wood's 32 now, fine, mm-hmm. he's not scored a lot, he didn't do very well at Newcastle, but he was a double-figures Premier League goal scorer I mean, they, 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 you know, These yeah. are players who've done stuff. They're, they're gambles, but I mean, that's what you have to do. I mean, look at Fulham, you know, signing Willian, you know, a player like Andreas Pereira. 
Mm. Um, you know, there's one or two others in there. He um, was great against Forrest, by the way. Ran the show, didn't he? Was, he? Yeah, yeah. He was over the, the, the you know, you, you, Raul Jimenez, another one who, who, that seems to be coming to fruition. Hopefully, for, for, for Fulham's sake. Mm. But you, you've got to gamble sometimes on players. You think, well, there is ability. He hasn't quite done it, or he's taking a left turn, as you say, Andy, and so on. Um, it's not quite happening. I mean, Al- Alang has been a, a pretty good for them so far this season. Um, I, I, I think it would be a shame if. If if Cooper was was sacked, if it, I'm it would, and particularly in the context of Aouni getting injured. I mean, yeah. you know, if, unless That's you're a like, big blow. yeah, unless you're like a top six side, yeah. something like that is going to absolutely kip you. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they will be facing Wolves away. I mean, Wolves have they're up in uh, in thirteenth on eighteen points, and I think Wolves they're surely looking up, aren't they? I mean, they're not not looking down, and I think for Wolves. They start putting runs together. I don't think it is utterly ridiculous to say that they could push for a top half finish, maybe like tenth or something. Yeah, I think the, the one of the most underrated players in the league this season is He Chan. Mm. No one talks about mm. him. He, he seems to score every single week. He looks really sharp whenever he plays. Um, and and the reason I think that's particularly interesting when it comes to Wolves is because the criticism of Wolves has been they don't just, just don't score goals. Yeah, we look, sp- look we... at them now. They're roughly scoring the amount of goals commensurate with their position in the table, which is a big change. Yeah, we spoke about this on Wednesday, and really that this is with Wolves. It's the difference between becoming from going from an average to struggling side mm-hmm. to comfy mid table. Yeah. You know that that mm-hmm. is that is the difference being able to put it. In and the I think I think I, I also think I know I would say this, but I also think Gary O'Neill. Yeah, it deserves credit. I mean, Wolves, oh, are, huge Wolves are a really big club. You know, they've got a huge mm. storied history. The expectation mm. there is high. Um, the circumstances he took over in as well. The circumstances were difficult. He was quite harshly treated in his last job, mm-hmm. which itself was a baptism of fire. Mm-hmm. He doesn't really feel like he's had a position where he's been able just to settle himself in and go, right, now this is how I want to do things. Yeah. The clubs have always been big. And so for, for him to, to swim rather than sink in that environment, I think is impressive. Does it feel a bit sad they're doing it without dirty Diego Costa? <laughs> it, it, yeah. <laughs> like, wow. There may be a link between why their fortunes have increased. I was about, I was about to say, Andy, because... Uh, aren't you know, they mobile at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're not scoring goals, because they haven't got the big man in there. Um, by the way, speaking of him, did you see, he's now playing for Botafogo, of course, in uh, in Brazil. Yeah, I'm absolutely terrified that he's going to join Leon in the transfer window. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're just now in the coffin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but he, 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 recently, when he was playing for them, he was seen holding the referee to avoid getting a yellow yeah, card. Yeah, I saw that. It's just super. You're not going to come on. Yeah, Get, look at me in the eye and book it, me. It, it, he's much <laughs> more get his arms out. Much more physically strong than the referee as well. It's quite unsettling to watch. Yeah, the really referee is. should have sent him off really for that. Of course, yeah. Well, he yeah. dropped his yellow card, hadn't he? So, I mean, he, maybe he was helping him look for it. Right, by, stopping, it him have, by, by stopping him picking it yeah, up. Well, I think he was put, that, put that straight back in your pocket. You won't be yeah. doing it's that. like when you sort of drop like a contact lens or something quite um, fragile. Mm. You don't want anyone to stand on it. Yeah. So you sort of hold it. Hey, steady. Don't stand on my contact it's lens. It's kind of like when you, quote unquote, help the barman, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you mean? <laughs> Just get around, well, get around behind there. Get around behind there. seem quite yeah. busy. By the way, while we're in Brazil, have you seen that... Um, Santos were relegated for the first time in their history. I haven't seen that. I can smell yeah. it. A hundred, <laughs> yeah, exactly. A hundred and eleven year history, first time relegated. Fans took it okay though. <laughs> oh was there not? Did they not like burn down the stadium or something? Well, no, they set fire to a load of cars outside. Let's not exaggerate. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I've done them a disservice fine. there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Palace former side. Yeah. Is that the first Neymar's former side? Mm. That would have so. Yeah. I guess. Well, he, he died um, last year, so it's the first season that. Um, Maybe it's related. That's all I'm yeah. saying. We should clarify Pele. Yeah, not Neymar. <laughs> Sorry, not Neymar. Yeah. Sorry, not Neymar. No. His career is dead. I think people would know that. PS- PSG has died because of Neymar. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. The thing is, if you were an out-of-contract player at the moment, I-, I-, I was thinking about this because, you know, Tony Cascarino had that incredible couple of seasons at Marseille mm. after they got relegated from the, the, the top flight after mm. the whole Glassman scandal, the match-fixing thing. And Cascarino, a player who, with all due respect to him, was a good player, never would have played for Marseille normally, yeah. went over there, had an amazing time, became an absolute He's superstar. He's a legend there now. Yeah, he was welcomed back there recently. Yeah, they had, him, yeah. they had him to a game there recently with a shirt with his name printed on the back and there was him stood next to a couple of far more storied players. Yeah. And it was, He's it was next nice. to Papin. You know, like <laughs> Deschamps. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I was better than you on Football Manager back <laughs> yeah. I think if, if you were someone who was kind of drifting at Premier League or Champions Club. Yeah. Would you be looking at that this. thinking, oh yeah, second tier at Santos? That could be a bit of me well, next because season because the the, um, the amount of um, like atmosphere at the stadium, the amount of kind of passion. Aren't they one of the most supported clubs in the world? They've got the most. They claim to have the most well, members. 
Uh, no, oh, uh, Santos. Santos. Yeah. Sorry, 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 they sorry. claim to have one of the most amount of members. I think they, they're a club with the most amount of members. Yes, of outside of like Barcelona, Real Madrid, or something. Mm. They're huge. So I mean, it would be an incredible experience. It'd be much better than going to fucking Saudi. Yeah, you know, it'd, oh, be, yeah. it'd be incredible. Mm. Yeah, no, you're right. I'd be all over that. It'd be even better for the four months where you actually got paid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the thing is, even you could go you, on loan to Pompey though. If you don't get, if you don't get, <laughs> if you don't get paid, you can. Um, you set fire the stadium. Yeah, set fire the car. <laughs> I was yeah. about to say, if you, if, if you are a budding footballer and you're thinking of going there, don't park outside the stadium. No, definitely yeah. not. You know, is, get the bus. Is, is, is it, get the bus. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, Aston Villa versus Arsenal on Saturday at 5.30. What a treat. The Emmy Martinez derby. And before we go any further, I need to apologise to Emmy Martinez because... Right. Well, when because we, you've been fucking the trophy. No. <laughs> The World Cup trophy. When we spoke about the FIFA awards, we were saying, oh, you know, I felt it should have been Haaland instead of Messi. But okay, I understand Messi got it with the World Cup heroics and so on. And then we spoke about Emmy Martinez winning best goalkeeper. Yeah. And I was a bit disparaging. I was like, ah, oh, come on, and so on. It was actually, looking back on it, I actually quite like he got best goalkeeper because it's not necessarily he is the goalkeeper with the most ability in the world. He is the goalkeeper who has been very important in that mm. in that year for for club and country. Yeah, and then since then, you know, just look at some of the saves he's been making, even yeah. in his last couple of games. He's been brilliant. He's been yeah. absolutely superb. And so I um, have written a poem. I've written a. <laughs> <laughs> this is an ode to Emmy Martinez. Oh. Emmy Martinez, a true character of the game. Who <laughs> give him the button? And surely future inductee of the Argentina Hall of Fame. <laughs> In shootouts, you eat penalty takers for dinner, and now you're immortalised as a World Cup winner. <laughs> when the FIFA awards were given, I was foolish, I was harsh, which is some cheek considering you play your football at Villa Park and I at Hackney Marsh. <laughs> Around the world, you now have a lot of love because you're a top goalkeeper and you hump the golden glove. Yes, oh, nice. Emmy Beautifully Martinez. timed In the well. week that Benjamin Zephaniah died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Huge tribute. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, mate. Well yeah. done, You're clapping yourself there, are you? I'm clapping Emmy Martinez. Fair enough. Uh, you know, yeah. as we all should. <laughs> Very unexpected. Um, Martin's got a right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wrote that when my uh, seven-month-old was all asleep on me. There we go. Oh, That's very nice. Very nice. All the love never end. You're, the only, you're so. the only person um, on this show, with the exception of possibly Pete, you can get away with doing that kind of stuff. Do you think so? Yeah, mm. I think so, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, Pete's would have been full of expletives and quite rude, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking about, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, would, it would mainly be about the glove fucking. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got it in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. squeezed yeah. it in the end. <laughs> A bit of blue for Petey. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, if Villa wins. Would you this... pop it down each of the finger holes? Sorry, carry on. <laughs> in turn, one, two, would you go thumb, forefinger, and then go I down? I think I'd save for thumb for the last trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd thumb, You've I'd got little when you last. Yeah. You've yeah. got a little last for the final yeah. pump. <laughs> <laughs> for the final pump. The final pump. Yeah. Then hand it over to some, some fan. <laughs> Sign it. <laughs> Sign it and hand it over to some fan. Uh, and the big wigs in Qatar are <laughs> watching on horror <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. Get that man out of this country. Yeah. Um, but look, I, th I think one thing that's really interesting about this game is that, you know, Arsenal obviously top of the league and it's a Saturday tea time treat of course but Aston Villa have they won 10 home Premier League games in a row they've, been, they've been magnificent they have been absolutely fucking brilliant mm. it is this would be, gravy this would be 15 yeah. this would be 15. 15 nobody could have predicted this you could have well, said that I did at the start of the season you said what well, after 15 games Villa would be third four points off the top I said they'd be in the top four when? I said they get top when? four. Well, we'll, we'll see in the predictions, won't we? We'll yeah, okay. well, we get, we'll... Cool, cool guys. So your, pro <laughs> your, your Just prediction... Just cool guys chatting. <laughs> so you... Don't Sorry, know. Pete, do you want to fucking have a fucking piece of clothing? <laughs> talk yeah. about that. Have you jizzed in your pants? I'm just... Yes, I have. <laughs> I, you know what? That, that will probably be politer than revealing your pre-season predictions um, in, I know, in December. Point, actually. No, that I, is bullshit. Cause, cause, cause to be honest, be called out for that. Because to be honest, I've had a stinker. <laughs> no, I was just trying to make Brad, sure. Well, Brad, sorry, Marcus. Yeah, the nice guy over there, yeah. the fucking clever one right. over there, told me last night some of his predictions. So don't fucking say it. You can't say it. Because you said it yesterday. Sure, yeah, but that, that, that is a bit different, though. Very Why? Different. It's way different. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, if, if you said something on air, and you went, well, well, he said it to me at dinner last night. It's like, yeah, but it's not a bro he didn't no, I broadcast. No, I just think I'm trying to listen to the only one I know. Shut up, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Let Tim Burr just do his thing. He's talking now. Yeah, I look. Oh, my, you know my... damn well I was in the toilet for the only one I know. <laughs> you were actually, I, yeah. I, I just wanted to get to the fact that. Um, that it's not only Emery who clearly takes credit for, for Villa success, it's also you. Thank you very much, everyone. You, you, in your yeah. prediction, you've played your part. Um, yeah. But they have been magnificent. There's no two ways about that. This, uh, you know, this, this, this season, I mean, even last season, but this season, now people talk about, oh, you know, we've got to go to Villa Park. 
Mm. It's a fortress. Yeah. It is yeah. officially a fortress, Andy Brassel. I put it to you. Yeah, and they've got so many attacking options, which is what makes this game so exciting as well. I mean, I would, as, as well as the fact that they overwhelmed Manchester City in that game on Wednesday night, I think you would have to go a long way to find a 1-0 win that was as exciting as that. Definitely. Mm. And Andy, it's brilliant. What I wanted to ask you when I knew we were going to be talking about Villa and Emery is that it'd be interesting to get a sense check from you who covers a lot of European football about whether you think that Emery's ability and reputation has been like heavily underrated in this country just because of the Arsenal experience and whether it's actually less of a surprise if you actually know a bit about, say, Spanish football or European football. I still think it's a little bit of a surprise right. because not that they're succeeding, but they're succeeding to this level and that they're attacking with this kind of verve because I think most people who know Unai Emery quite well think he's a very good coach and think he was a bit harshly treated because of his experiences at Arsenal and PSG. And mainly the suggestion there would be that maybe he can't quite deal with elite players. Like Neymar, for example, wouldn't talk to him. Maybe that says more about Neymar than it says about I think Unai it, yeah, Emery. Yeah, yeah, it I, definitely yeah, yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next point. But, but any, anyway, I think the sense about Unai Emery is he's always a little bit overcautious, thinks about the opposition a little bit too much and doesn't necessarily have the bravery to go and win games. But his team do. This team do, which yeah. is quite a departure for Emery. Yeah, and, yeah, okay. you know, I mean, what did he have? A fifth place finish with Arsenal? Was that in his first season? They kind of tailed off at the I'm, I'm not really talking about the, the numbers, though. I mean, he got a couple of third places with Valencia. I'm, I'm talking about the manner in which the team play. Because this Villa team are not just successful. They're absolutely box office. Look, sometimes a player goes to a, a, a team and doesn't quite work out and then becomes a mm. world beater elsewhere. You know, sometimes we don't think, we it's don't give managers And it's also the circumstances that kind of grace, at Arsenal you know. because, you know, you come in... Post Wenger and all talk, that. The talk yeah, of exactly. who it's going to be for years and yeah. he, he's, he's going into a situation where it's no different really to the people who've struggled after Ferguson at United. Exactly. It's the same principle. Yeah. And, and he, I just thought it was a really brave move for him to take that job. Mm. It, it um, felt like the right moment for him though because, of course, he could have had the Newcastle job mm. before... <laughs> He thought about it and then decided against it. Yeah, and I think with Villa, you know, we know they've got a decent squad. You, you can't do what he's doing without a decent squad. But it shows you just how crucial the manager can be because whenever we talk about Villa, we immediately talk about the manager. Mm. The tune he's getting out of these players is, is quite something. As I say, they have a good team. Well, talking of the cottage, the, the graveyard for Premier League managers, <laughs> it always makes me think of when we were there, Stephen when Gerard. Stephen Gerrard got his, his send-off. And what, what a low point they were at then. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yeah. And it wasn't that long ago, of course. No. Um, but uh, the way they played that game against Manchester City, it shows the maturity. They weren't hanging on. They were, you know, Matt and City no. didn't have many chances, if any at all. And, and 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 sometimes, you know, you look at teams who can nick a win against Man City. Yeah. Or a team, you know, Man City are in a bit of a weird phase at the moment. It seems as we sit here talking about them now, but with it's not. It wasn't that. It was like this is a team with a plan. They're executing that plan, and that plan is better than Man City are on the night. And that's a different thing than just, you know, camping out in your own half and hoping you, you get what you get. In many ways, like, the identity they've got is so strong that it makes you confident they're going to be able to sustain this, mm -hmm. um, even though they've got, you know, potentially some quite tricky European fixtures. If they finish if they finish fourth this season, it'll be their best finish since 1996. Yeah, there you go. You know, mm. that, and that, that's going back a long, old way, you know. When was the last time they won the title? Come on, before the, big before yeah, <laughs> before that, yeah, it was. but the, but that, of course, the, 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 part of the reason, part of the context of this conversation is the team has won European trophies and they're, they're, a, they're a huge club. They last won the league in 1981. Yeah, I've just checked, and uh, you know that, that's what you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, just, you know what I mean, so and and and, and that, the reason I think that's interesting as well is because that is part of the story of why Aston Villa have been, you know, in the second languishing in the second tier for a club of their size because the expectation is high. Yeah. And because people demand more. And because, you know, they're, they're, you know, it's not that long ago that they've had success and they've not um ridden the crest of that Premier League wave, the way that some other clubs who were perhaps a bit smaller than them have done for whatever reason. So for Emery to come and restore that, mm. it's a bit early to say that at the moment because they haven't actually achieved anything yet, really. But if they do, you know, the, the, the season they can have, mm -hmm. realistically, I'm not saying it will happen, but it is not unrealistic to say that Aston Villa could finish in the top four of the Premier League this season and win a European trophy. Yeah. And you would not be, you'd be laughed out of town by saying that 
three years ago. And mm. they've and they've managed that European football and Premier League so well. People might say, oh, it's the Conference League and it's a poor standard, but you've still got to do the travel. You've still got to do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. They've they've been they've been superb, and the way they're going is that Jack Grealish might want to go back there soon. <laughs> he might be lucky to get back there soon. Yeah, he might be lucky to get back there at this rate. Dean Smith also says you're an encyclopedia of football. A what? An encyclopedia of football. I don't know what that means. Oh, can I go back to Villa, please? It's a simple game of categories. You go too slow. You're going to be hearing Gary Neal's orgasm, which will leave you seven seconds. Uh, Vish, uh, I'm say, I mean, he's, he's won his um, second successive title uh, last week, but I, I don't really count the week before because uh, that was the debacle um, that I administered. <laughs> right. We're going, to, we're going to kick things off. A clean game today, then. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. think th- there's grown-ups in the room here, I think, even if we were mm-hmm. a bit tired after the Charlatans last night. Um, right. Charlatans album tracks. <laughs> 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 well, neither of you would win because you were arguing about it before, all ears, about what tracks were where Andy and all that business. Andy, Andy would, would win. win. Hurry up, pulp, all right. pulp boy. Hurry up. Andy, <laughs> we're going to kick things off. Um, players and, of... so, sorry, Andy's going first. He is, yeah. What's wrong with that? It's a massive advantage. That's what's wrong with that. I don't think it is. Well, I don't think it's proved to be in the past. No, it? no. Completely, uh, completely agree with that, Andy. Uh, and uh, that's a point for you. Um, <laughs> players who have played every minute in the Premier League so far this season. There are Ooh. 14 players. Andy first. Players who have played every minute in the Premier League so far this season. Emmy Martinez. Ooh, you oh. fucker. That was what I was going for. You dirty bastard. <laughs> Great. Uh, Great. Oh, Great advantage. Glad he went first because yeah. I would have said him otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Bert Marcus. Leno. He has. Come on. Ooh. He because, has. Because I respect our listeners and I right. want to give them some entertainment, mm. I'm going for an outfield player. Oh, yeah, yeah, fair. Lewis Dunk. Oh, oh fuck it. He off, didn't he? Unlucky. Of course he did. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> he normally always plays every it's, minute. It's one nil to spell. Marcus, oh. well done, mate. <laughs> Get that category out of the way. Oh, crap. Get the Charlotte's album track. Do it, do, there's do a it. lot of players in here you don't want to play every minute of the Premier League. And <laughs> Andrea Nana being one of them. Oh, yeah. Bruno Fernandes, uh, Ethan Pivot, P- uh, Pinnock, um, Zabani. Uh, we got Trafford in there. We got uh, Anderson. We got uh, Maximilian Kilman. We got Robert San- Sanchez. We got uh, Sam Johnson. We got Thiago Silva, uh, Kaminsky, Fod Stringham and Salibar. Tell you what, Thiago Thiago Silva. That's yeah. amazing. Wow. That's amazing. It's nearly 40. It is yeah. vintage. All right, number two. To be fair, uh, Chelsea are languishing. <laughs> Marcus for the win, I suppose. Uh, players that have scored over 25 Premier League goals for Aston Villa. Oh, nice one. Players that have scored over 25 Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. What, what did he 60 say? 60 goals. No, you, if you Dwight want this now, that's on you. No, I just didn't hear. He said, what's what's going he said Dwight York. Okay. Uh, I'll go Ollie Watkins. You're going to go for Ollie Watkins. You're going to get Ollie Watkins, 48. The big man, Gabby Agbon Lahore. <laughs> Gabby <laughs> Agbon Lahore, 73. <laughs> Julian leading, Joachim. Leading the field. Oh, good to hear him. Correct, mention. Marcus, 39. Excellent. Well, Thank you. That is the moment of the game for me. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I'll go. I'll give you a little clue. Oh, who's that? DJ? Emil Heskey. No, nice. I didn't say DJ Greetlow there. Emil Heskey. Uh, Emil Heskey. We will go with a no. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Although I'm surprised am I? That, I am that, that was the coder of his career, really, wasn't it? I am repel- <clears throat> repellent. Repellent. <laughs> I, am repellent. I, I cannot get anything right at this game. Uh, well, yeah. Maybe, maybe you could predict that you're going to not do very well, and then you get that right. Mm. Yeah. Hey, you're giving Andy a lot of time here. Sorry, Andy. Oh well, I can quickly go for the late great Dalian Atkinson. Oh. No way. No, didn't get it. Spell of wins. It. Didn't get it. Didn't Marcus get it. Spell of wins. Very easy. A mercifully short game. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> but I got it with a moment of the game. Did. It's been a very Aston Villa themed game yeah. of trophies, though. <laughs> could we have had Christian Benteke? Was he there long enough for that? Uh, you could have had Christian Benteke, 42 goals, quite yeah. a lot of them. Uh, Emi Heskey only scored nine goals in the Premier League for uh, Obviously, he's never scored. Villa, uh, Ashley Young, he had 30. Uh-huh. 30? Yeah. Well, that was in great. Uh, I guess he played a bit further forward. Darius Vassell, 35. Vassell. 
the the pride of Turkey. Um, Dean Saunders, <laughs> Dion Dublin, Gareth Barry, Ian Taylor, John Carew, uh, Juan Pablo Angel, oh, Lee yeah. Hendry, and Savo Milosevic. I had Milosevic, did you? Yeah, I thought he that didn't was need a bit it, of a gamble. He had some to spare. But there's a head Lovely scarf. to hear his name though. Yeah, he bonked his head on a thing, didn't he? He bonked his head on a on a on a roof or something, did he? And that's why he wore a headscarf. I remember like that Cole Corgan. fabulous goal he scored. I think it was in the League Cup final against Leeds United. Bit of a tour oh. for me, Marcus. It felt like a bit of a tour. Yeah, and that Ronaldinho one. That... <laughs> Sometimes they he go did in. other stuff. He did other that stuff. That one at Stanford Bridge was ridiculous. Yeah, me? there we are. I remember watching that in real time, thinking, mm. "Fucking how's he done that? What a player, Milosevic, eh?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there we are, everybody. Thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble Preview Show, sponsored by Betfair, part of the Acast Creator Network. Do join us tomorrow for that mailbag, everybody. Follow us on uh, Twitter, currently known as X, TikTok, YouTube and Instagram at Football Ramble. And don't forget to subscribe on your podcast app. The keys are in the lock, Andy Brassel. The door Hooray! is open. And the charlatans are playing, of course. How fitting. <laughs> no, Pitbull's covering a charlatan song. Oh, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, He's got residency. Like, like, like one to another. Yeah. <laughs> how high? I'll show you how high, baby. Um, thank you very much, Luke Moore. Thank you. Thank you, Pete Donaldson. Goodbye. Enjoy thank, the weekend, everyone. Thank you, Andy Brassel. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video. And if you're feeling extra generous, why don't you like this video? Why don't you like this video? Why don't you like this video?